G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and as you've seen, I've just finished feeding the ducks, chickens, and quails, refurbishing their pen a little, and I'm back up here, just sitting down, relaxing in this spring heat. It's about 30 degrees Celsius today, it's amazing. I had a couple of mulberries on the way down and up, and my thumb is a little stained and my fingers, but oh boy, they're beautiful. Springtime, the weather's a little bit unexpected, and this heat through spring and, and even late winter brought on the mulberries really early. So we had a early mulberry season and uh, sometimes that can be good and bad. I've got lots to talk to you guys about. It's been a really big week and that's one of the reasons why I didn't put out a midweek video was because I was busy. We had family over and for a lot of the week and I was busy preparing for the family to come over and then of course entertaining and making sure that they were having a good time here on our property. But anyway, let's get into it. You would have noticed the title of the video being Snakes and Dragons. Of course the dragons is reference to the dragon fruit, but the behind the scenes of the making of that dragon fruit video we did last week was that my wife was filming and uh, you would have known that because she was snorting and laughing at me in the background. Uh, we did a bit of an outtake at the end of that video. Anyway, so this is how this scene unfolded. Holy shit, there's a snake. It's sick. Look, I'll just let it go in the bush and so the dog can't get it. But he doesn't look too healthy. I won't let it go in the neighbour's yard. Get out of it, Scooter. He's alive, he's, there's no worries there. It's just that he's, uh, for some reason, he's looking sick. Or he might just be cold, because it's a cool day. But I'll let him go over the fence here. Yeah, he's going to look for some shelter. Well, we'll just leave him be but it is summer now well it's spring so we're getting into snake season and uh, best I just go away so that the dog leaves alone come on yeah so there you go a little bit scary stuff I mean particularly for my wife it wasn't for me I love snakes and I'm very wary of them I know I probably shouldn't have handled it people will say Mark, you're flirting with danger there. You could easily get bitten if you don't know what you're doing. But I've had a lot of experience with snakes. I would, I would do the political correct thing and say, for most people, don't try handling snakes or getting them angry or ushering them on. If you're in doubt, call a wildlife professional, blah, 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 yakety yak. For me, if you're living on a property on a farm and you see plenty of snakes, you usually just usher them on and uh, that's fine. Speaking of snakes, being spring and the snakes coming out of hibernation is a time where I usually do my pruning, which you knew I was doing, and also cleaning up after the pruning and taking care of any old wood piles that I might have, especially the ones that I can easily chip myself and that I'm not saving for our fire pit or to use. So let's go check that out. Here's what's left of the big wood pile that I had. I cleaned up all the small stuff. 
or anything around 150 mil or you know about six inches or so across turned it into wonderful wood chip that's going to go really well in the garden in the garden beds or around fruit trees perfect even in the quail pen or the chicken pen turn it into a nice chicken mulch and fertilizer for the vegetable garden the other wood chip pile is here just behind this figure 11 target but that was from the boys picking up all the sticks around the here and down around the poultry pen just cleaned up the area quite nicely what I'll, what I'll often do is collect sticks and logs and chop, chop up stuff and then in the springtime I'll just hire the chipper the once. That way, you know, at 220 or so dollars a day, it saves quite a bit of money saving it all up and getting it all over and done within one big day rather than rehiring the chipper for half a day here, half a day there, every time you cut something up or pick up a bunch of sticks. So you generally save it all up and do a big chipping job once a year. Pay for a nice big chipper, 150 mil one, nice and easy. Well, it's not easy. Overall, the vegetable garden is looking really good. We had a bit of a thunderstorm. Actually, it wasn't a bit, it was quite a lot of rain and uh, being historically dry winters and springs here in this climate, it's really great to get that extra boost of rain, especially in the driest part in spring when it's coming into summer, but just hasn't rained much at all. And you have gotta start thinking about serious irrigation to keep your trees and your vegetables, not just alive, but thriving so that they can produce really good quality fruit and veg because obviously if you don't the opposite happens things dry up things die and things don't produce very nice tasting food well most anyway this asparagus here for example just benefits greatly from the extra moisture and that nitrogen that a thunderstorm brings down we've just been picking this constantly it's nice to have a little bit of rain so that it just tides you over until the summer rains hit uh, especially in these really hot climates but overall I'm pretty happy with how the vegetable garden is looking and I'm glad that I pruned and did all that hard yakka pruning all those fruit trees 80 or 100 of them uh, before the we got that big storm and obviously before the middle of spring and, and summer hits where you get the maximum growth and and fruit set for most of our trees. Yeah, so there you go. That's what's happened this week. It's been a fairly tough one. It's very physical, but lots of fun. I mean, the family coming over and the first thing they did was my wife, she took them around the garden and uh, they gravitated towards the mulberry trees, of course. <laughs> they came back inside after a walk around the fruit trees and the veggie garden, showing me their hands like this. My mother-in-law, she even had a mulberry stain across her beautiful white blouse, her top. And she was wearing it like a badge of honour. You know, look what I've been up to in your garden, eating all the mulberries. And I'm really glad they were because there's quite a bit of competition to eat the mulberries by the birds and other animals. And I think the sooner we hook into them and eat them, the less they're going to get. But to be honest, we're producing so many that it doesn't matter if the birds get a few. Good luck to them. We've still got plenty to eat. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget my website, selfsufficientme.com. Give us a thumbs up and share this video around if you can, because that helps. Bye for now.